Hello, uh, my name is Jeff Goldblum, and this is my fashion timeline with uh, Vanity Fair. And there I am, speaking of fashion. Now, what the heck? This is 1983. This has something to do with a big chill event, but you know, it's some kind of party. My hair is, you know, it's a bit it's darker, of course. Nicely cut, nothing wrong. A conventional, conventional cut, I'd say. And my hairline comes down a little further, but I, I say nature is a beautiful thing. Don't mask nature. I remember those glasses. Not my favorite thing. I would not wear that now. I probably had very few clothes then. When I went to New York at 17 and lived in my own apartment, this is 1970, and started to study with Sanford Meisner, I was released and for the first time was buying my own food, going into restaurants, tasting things that I'd never heard of before, and looking for clothing. I went into army surplus things. I had a big Russian overcoat because New York could be cold and a kind of a aviator hat that I remember was kind of kooky. And my friend who stayed, who I've been friends with, Gary, all these years, saw a couple of purchases and went, have you lost your mind? I know now I'm ever-changing, and so my current thinking is the name of my, my current uh, autobiography. My current thinking. Um, not really, I just made that up. Wait a minute, I know this picture. I've seen this show up recently on, uh, so many things show up on the Instagram. I look like I'm wearing a, 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 a coonskin cap or some guy. I look like Daniel Boone, but that's my hair. Well, I started to grow it in the fly around that time. I think I was enjoying the long hair and said, hey, I'm going to keep the long hair for this part, Mr. David Cronenberg, or something like that, I think, as I remember. But the clothes I'm wearing, I'm now shopping at a place, I do believe, called Douglas Fir. But yes, I, you know, so it was a boxy, you know, as was maybe the style of the day. The shoulders were still a bit constructed and overextended. Of course, I don't have any of the clothes you've shown me so far in my closet at this point. They'd fit me because I stay in fighting, fighting weight. One of my favorite poems is uh, Elbow Room, cried Daniel Boone. I've recently retooled it uh, to go Elbow Room, cried Jeff Goldblum, which really rhymes better. That's the name of my current autobiography, Elbow Room. Well, this is, of course, my costume from Jurassic Park. I, in fact, proactively went shopping. And I tell you, if my memory is, serves me, if I'm, unless I'm a ring-tailed monkey, which I very well may be, and incorrect, I purchased that um, leather blazer, which I no longer have, nor would I want to have it now. And there's my open shirt, Telly Savalasi, kind of couple of buttons undone look. But where's that uh, turquoise? I don't have any turquoise jewelry, although I, I like to wear some jewelry these days. No turquoise. I find turquoise a little uh, difficult. And there are my tinted glasses. Well, I've always fooled around with that tinted glass. These are not, but I have a couple in my small mm, collection now that have a bit of a tint to them. I'm always frightened that it's going to make me look uh, smarmy or druggy or m malevolent in some way, instead of cool and sexy, which is what I'm go going for. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, we, here, we, 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 we skinned the cat with those, I guess. So I would go into LA Works. I said, what, what do you think? It's tint. It's no tint. It's, which tint would I have? Oh, and then they show you the little discs. That's how I came up with a few of those. I had no stylist. I don't think anybody had a stylist so-called back then. That's a, that's proliferated like running shoes and, and yogurts and stuff like that. But I've always been susceptible to the last person that I talked to. <laughs> I went into the Jacques Marie Maj place after finding these on a photo shoot and got like four or five pair and eliminated a few others. So I, I like to have a minimal collection. Ever since I was a kid, when I needed glasses, there was only hard contact lenses, which I went and got. My mom thought that I might be better off without glasses. And I don't know if you know anything about it at the time, you, what you did was you'd, you'd boil it every night and you had to clean it and da da da. And then you had this hard thing, you'd put it in and wear it for 10 minutes the first day and take it out and wear it for 15 minutes the second day. I, essentially, you were trying to develop a callus on your eyelid 
It was horrible, and especially for somebody as, and I'll go into it in a second, as delicate as myself. So that really didn't stick. The years went by. I explored other for either vanity purposes or practical purposes. I gotta, you know, read some things and I wanna act without my glasses. I talked to somebody about LASIK. I'm not a good uh, candidate for it. For some reason, I'm in between. I'm not too myopic. I'm right here is perfect. And right there is a little blurry, so this is perfect now. Tried all the modern versions of disposable, you know, lightweight. I was always still very happy at the end of the day Oh, to take them off and go, geez, that's, I don't want to wear them. And finally, several years ago, I went, take all these old ones out, throw them away, that's it, I'm, I'm, I'm done with them. Because I like glasses, I like myself in glasses, I don't really mind, I've grown accustomed to my lifestyle, which includes glasses, and I, and I kind of like glasses. So that's, that's my story. Uh-oh! <laughs> well, I've gone through some crazy periods, although, you know, I consider myself a bohemian type. I wish I'd been up in Haight-Ashbury, you know, in 1967, summer of love. But, so here I am in, in 2001, uh-oh, with a tinted glass with an orange aviator frame and a t-shirt tucked into a as you see, the most striking uh, element of this is that piratical, you know, blue and white striped pant. But I remember when I was a, a kid, I, I liked a striped pant. I wouldn't mind a striped pant now or a, a crazy printed pant, but I could do better than this. And then there's that belt. The belt itself is a bronzy kind of a chunky affair. I don't think I look very good right here. What's the matter with me? That's the, that's the name of my current autobiography after this. It's called What's the Matter with Me? In any case, very interesting. Another excellent excavation. Oh my golly. Brings back a lot of memories. This is me at the Tribeca Film Festival. I love that Mr. Robert De Niro, you know, and that whole festival. I was a judge for a, a week or so. Uh, uh, that was a lot of fun, seeing some interesting movies and talking with interesting people about them and getting my picture took. And uh, it's not entirely successful, this outfit, I would say. But I liked it at the time and I wore it. There you see my air tie white shirt. And I think I just had bought this new leather jacket. And that's of course the classic white low top Converse. No longer have it, no longer have any. I've had a bunch of them. I've had a bunch of shoes. Mm, I have a little collection now that doesn't include any of those. Yes, yes. Well, that's Jimmy Kimmel. I love Jimmy Kimmel. I went on his show, and now I've got my, I have a stylist now, a wonderful guy. I did this um, shoot four years ago for GQ, and Andrew Vitero was working on it. After all the talking we've done about clothes, you can imagine, I was yakking about it and, and said, you guys really know what you're, you've seen everything. I wish somebody like you would come to my closet and just look at everything and tell me what to throw away. He didn't, we've been in cahoots ever since. I've sort of bought some new clothes and get dressed in a different way. And uh, Prada, uh, they've been very nice. Andrew had seen this shirt on a runway or something like that and said, hey, do you have that shirt? And yes, and, and then he said, hey, wear it on Jimmy Kimmel, was his suggestion. And I like it, it's very, it's nice, kind of boxy, colorful, fun. Uh, which I'm always kind of interested in a little bit, especially if says, somebody says, oh, you're not crazy. This is fun that you can, this is fun in a good way. I don't follow everything that comes out, but I gather that people were a little bit struck by it. One of the things I like about clo my is, is how it feels, you know. And I like to be unconstricted, you know, so there's something about that. L let me say if I uh, publicly uh, that Pusher T and I are in no competition and I, I sit at your feet, Pusher T. I think you wore that shirt absolutely beautif beautifully. <laughs> and uh, I did the best I could. <laughs> you know what I did? I sort of re-outfitted the character of Ian Malcolm for that commercial, Jeep commercial, that the great uh, Colin Trevorrow, who directed and wrote the last one, wrote this one, he's gonna write and direct the next one. It was shown on the Super Bowl, and as I was, my Jeff Goldblum ostensibly was fantasizing as he was trying to buy this Jeep about himself as the character Ian Malcolm. I wore essentially this, I think I wore this shirt and this jacket. 
This is my new version of my favorite Ian Malcolm. I have this from Saint Laurent, and the, which I like. I've always liked a kind of a leather jacket. It's kind of, if you want to be, you know, cool, and it's, it's, it seems to, you know, you know, be a little sexy to me, and da da da. And I, I like to be practical too. It's got pockets. Like this has pockets. I don't have to put anything in my pants. When I first started to put things in my pocket, I was always like, it's fallen out. As we know, things can fall out. Your phone? Can you imagine? Because recently I've uh, succumbed to the addiction of having a phone and all, all the time, and you don't want to lose it. Huh, huh. So, so nothing like a good button or a snap, uh, and um, and uh, or a zip, you know. Anyway. <laughs> well, a glorious moment for for Mr. Goldie, again, I've just received my star. I'm wearing, once again, these glasses. David Cox has fixed my hair into a blue wave of some kind, the, the likes of which is coming in the midterm elections. I'd seen, you know, I'm, I'm nothing if not conscientious, and I, uh, in preparation, I'd wanted to do, they, they require you to do, a, make some remarks. So I saw all the YouTube um, presentations that I could of people who had gone through that ceremony and what they'd said and what they'd worn. <laughs> I looked at what everybody wore. And so I had a good idea of what people kind of did. And so, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I've got my collection of rings on and my watch that I'd gotten. I really, tactily, I like to wear nothing. I like to wash my hands and have not worry about anything, and I like to be and I like to be free. But I do like a, a ring. So I got married to the beautiful Emily four years ago, and I love my ring. She's engraved on the inside something. And then I said to a Andrew, I was thinking about a pinky ring. Am I crazy? No, he said no. Let me think about it. And we went uh, shopping. And this is the first item we got. When Emily first saw it, she went, no, please don't wear that. I said, well, I'd like to. So, so see if it grows on you. If that wasn't enough, another pinky ring presented itself, it fit me, and I went, hey, I like it. And I started to wear that, two pinky rings. And then we purchased these two rings. Uh, which I wear together, and then we got this thing. It's a dagger, and it's got some little diamonds in it. Once again, I brought this home. I showed my wife. She went, what are you doing? It's what kind of person wears a ring like that? Are you that kind of person? <laughs> I don't think so. I said, well, I don't know, maybe I am. <laughs> and uh, I, I like it. I like it. And uh, maybe she likes it too now. As you can see, I'm still back from my Ian Malcolm from 1993, you know, still in a Johnny Cash, you know, all black thing, which I could, well, here I am again. Well, I have a Saint Laurent uh, a chino on, stretchy chino. I do favor the stretchy. And then that jacket. You know what it reminds me of? It's sort of, you know, as you can see, glitt glittery, shiny, kind of a bomber jacket. Doesn't Neil Diamond wear something like that when he does that video to, uh, they're coming to America. Uh, you know, you know that video? I think he's got something like that. And then they were taking my picture and I said, and I thought, hey, Jeff, sit, sit down on your star. Da, 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 da. I said, well, I'll assume the position that I do somewhat in that shirtless photo of me from Jurassic Park. So I, I did something like that. Eh, and I'm, I, I'm full of goodwill and no longer it's brooding. Happy as a clam. That's the name of my new autobiography. Happy as a clam. And there, <laughs> there we go. So there we go. Me and my star. A young boy and his star. I consider, you know, dressing myself up or presenting myself in one way or another part of my creative, you know, path path, opportunity. So hopefully until the day I croak, uh, I'll be continuing to refine my character and my, uh, and even my aesthetic um, sensibility. <laughs>